how does it work when we are blocked? And then uh, we'll, we'll try to take a look also at how to unlock it, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, just one uh, uh, clarification, is it uh, the block uh, with the white uh, page, you know, at the beginning of the process or is it when you are starting to write and you Different get stuck? Blocks, I think. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good question. I think it's not the same. Let's, let's start with the, let's take off from the, white, the blank page, maybe. Case number one. And, maybe, and maybe then we look at the... Everybody's blocked. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's strongly related to what we, we already yeah, that's a, tackled yeah. this We kind morning. of talked about the blank page. How to open and yeah. how is this openness, so going back to openness. But the maybe other block a, is a bit different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for example, if I, when I'm in blocked on a story, I just talk to everyone I know about it. And I just tell them, my film, you know, like, but it's like the Uber driver, this, <laughs> I mean, in general, I tend to do this, but with the block especially, because actually, first of all, the more you talk about it, the more, rarely you get something from the person that you're telling to, but you're constantly kind of mulling it over. And then sometimes it's the most unexpected, like lateral thing that someone says to you. And I guess that's the core is always that confrontation, you know, like testing your thoughts constantly. So maybe I don't say, oh, I have this problem, but I don't know how to move this forward. But I talk about the film, you know, and you talk about it and you talk about it. And then suddenly, usually something for me unlocks in one of those conversations. So confrontation. Mm. Yeah. For me, more when I work, I try to identify the resistances. I know that there are some resistances that blocked. So I try to identify with the author what kind of the resistance can act, you know. And, uh, what do you mean I, resistance? Resistance can be uh, the resistance to the material itself, meaning that the material touches some parts, for instance, of your private life or whatever, that cause to you a kind of, uh, of block. Mm. So you put a resistance, so you don't want, you want to, you wish to go there, but you don't want to go there. <laughs> so there is a kind of movement which is a little bit, uh, you know, controversial. So I try to, to so see... fear, fear as a block in a way. Yeah, I like mean, it could be fear, fear, it could be fear, you could discomfort. be... Discomfort. emotions? And discomfort, mm. discomfort more often. I found it's a kind of discomfort. So he wants to go there, but there isn't something that he retain him and he stay in the Maybe. periphery of the subject, not in the core of the subject. So uh, I try to identify if I if I am I'm able to identify the uh, the resistance that he has, and I try to work on it with different ways. So it could be uh, okay with tarots. Tarots is a good good way to uh, to solve open, yeah. uh, to open the block of the resistance because we are speaking about figures. We are speaking about arcan. I mean, something which is in the same time mystery, symbolic, but in the same time, you can translate the story within through the tarot. So it's very useful for that. Sometimes I try just in, um, how to say, not speaking about the story itself, but speaking about something which is similar to the story, but it's another story. For instance, le as if is very useful for that. Mm. For instance, as if it was not this kind of uh, situation, but is, uh, and I say, a similar situation, you know? And it's more easier for the author through a similar situation, but not that one, to unblock. Mm. You know, but you have to identify a little bit the, the, you know, the resistance that you have. But maybe one of the thing, important thing is to identify also what is the point of the block, what is the block about. It is, yeah, that's it is, the first it, thing. It, it, it is, uh, is it a lack of ideas, a uh, problem of inventing new, new things, or is it a, a problem about picking the right one that you have? You're blocked not because you don't have idea, but you're blocked because you don't know how to select the good one or the direction that you want to go. Or do you block on one scene? Or do, if you're blocking about the identity of the film you're writing, what is it? Of course. Then that's, it's much more... The and, or the worst block is when you're 
blocked, but you don't know even what, like, as in that mm -hmm. something feels wrong, which I think is a very frequent one, but, but you have no idea what it is, like, don't not even can pin it down to one of those mm -hmm. four things. And sometimes the block is uh, a little bit like, uh, you know, it touched the character, it touched the ideas, it touched the situation, it touches a lot of things in the same time. It's not just one block on the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a first a kind of block. Uh, the first kind of block is very vague. It's more that you feel powerless. Uh, you have no object, uh, you have no problem, you have no idea. And um, in the life of uh, some a writer, uh, that happens all, all the time. So uh, to me, instead of thinking about it as a block, I think of it as a natural phase, a natural moment of void. And I think of it in, in time, instead of being stuck in the moment. In terms of time, I think about the, the notion of rhythm. You, you told about rhythm. I think this is the most important thing in a writer's life, is going to be long. And you have to accept that, like a sea, we are close to the sea. To me, the sea is the best metaphor for what's happening to us. There's a wave. It's down and up. So when you are down, you have to know that there's going to be something up. You have to wait for the wave. And when you are in the down, you have to do something about it. But you don't have to push the wave. You have to wait for it. And you have to be very pa patient. Maybe you can read. Maybe you can watch another movie. You have to do something to collect, when that happens to me, and that can be very long, um, I just read, I take notes. I, I don't try to fight against the, the, the emptiness. And at some moments, I don't know why, maybe because I had a sleep, a nap or whatever, or somebody told me something, uh, suddenly I feel the beginning of a wave and uh, suddenly, I, suddenly I take my surf and I, okay, I'm gonna try to write this one. Maybe it's a small one, it was not a good one, but I'm gonna wait and like that. So it's not the block. I think the, the block is not a good metaphor to deal with because it can, it can be blocking. <laughs> and uh, I love the architect Frank Gehry when he talks about the writer's block. He says, don't talk about it. It doesn't exist because everybody's always blocked. This is the natural situation to be blocked. If you are in a creative business, you are always blocked. So it's not worth pondering about it. So to me, this is the first uh, kind of block. This is just from the imagination and you have to, to get rid of it by accepting the notion of rhythm. It's going to be back. Something is going to come because you are not responsible uh, for the flow. The ideas, they don't come from you. You have to ride with the wave and wait for it. You cannot really provoke it. You can feed it, but you, you can't push it. The second kind of block comes when you are inside the project. You have an idea that you, are, you have developed and something doesn't work. Something doesn't feel right. And this is a block that comes from, uh, it's a resistance, but not from your psyche. It's from the material itself. There's a problem in the material. And then you have tools. So, for example, if you, have a, uh, if you are lucky enough to have a script doctor or a co-writer that has tools, you can use the tools. And for example, a good tool, it's asking questions to what you have already done. And you use, for example, the genre. And if you ask yourself, okay, I know what I want to talk about. I know what I like. I know in, in what mood I want to organize my thing. But I don't know what genre. If, if I was to sell the, the, the movie, what genre it is? And maybe what combination? And uh, if you have a genre, it's like a mold. Uh, or mold or if you are cooking, for example, if you make uh, cakes, if you have a mold, you can put any mold you want. But on your material, if you try a mold, suddenly some ideas are selected because, because they cannot fit in that genre. And uh, you can try that. Uh, so you can be very technical because you are not inspired. And while you are technical, maybe it can unlock at some point, it can unlock the wave and you can resolve the problem because it's a problem maybe of anatomy. And I like to think of a story uh, as a, a living organism. And uh, sometimes the surgeon doesn't know where the problem is. So you don't need to open <laughs> the whole body, you know? You've got to, to be clever about it or you're going to ruin what you've already done. So you have to be very accurate and you have to observe what you've already done as if it's something written by somebody else. But, but Samira, could we say that being frustrated at some point is a part of the process? 
、はい、Is it normal? Is it, is, it a, is it an accidental phase or is it a normal thing? Is it a good thing in a way? <laughs> Uh, actually, you, you, you get frustrated is if you are blocked and you have to accept it and、uh, move on to, to something else.、Uh, we, we have uh, uh, produced a model that represents script writing as a, a, a maze. So there are a, a true paths, everything you know, you, the flow,、uh, everything is fine. Everything. And there are some blind alleys. So you go there. You, can, you are blocked. You can't、uh, go further. So you have to retrace your、uh, um, pack. You have to, to find another way to do it. And frustration i n c r e a s e when you continue to enter the same blind alleys,、uh, which means that uh, uh, what happens in general, you, are,、uh, you want to finish your,、uh, your writing, you want to finish your.、Uh, Uh, the goal you have fixed, you know, like a 10 page or, uh, or uh, the whole、uh, script, and you don't want to stop. And in fact, the thing to do when you are blocked is to stop, to do something else, to go for a walk, to, go,、uh, to, to work on another project, or to do something. Because it's uh, uh, like what、uh, h a v e said one、um, script writer、uh, with the metaphor of fishing net. If your、uh, fishing net gets Untangled, so to, to, if you start pulling, it, you get stuck more and more. So the thing is, you, you, you will、uh, undo it easily without thinking. So the problem, you know, it, it, if you are blocked and uh, uh, you get frustrated, it's just you, it's time to change, to do something. And in general, people are not wise enough to stop. And to change to, and to do. I, I, can, I can say it even for myself when I want to finish something and I'm blocked. You know, you write different things, and it's like the structure of the whole thing doesn't fit. There are things, you know, if like、uh, you have、uh, the, the, the body structure is not、uh, the correct one. So the, you feel that something is wrong, but you don't know wha- what is it. And,、uh, What we, we have seen is some,、uh, some script writers、uh, who attended schools or have been、uh, you know, trained, they have this、uh, treatment or、uh, you know, like a sort of structure、uh, before starting the writing. So they go back, they check the structure, they, they know where they are, uh, uh, where there, there is a problem.、Uh, others, they have just some diagrams. You know, because、uh, they, they don't、uh, write、uh, the, the 40 page of treatment or they have d- 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 diagrams. And the thing is, whenever when you start writing, you have an idea at the beginning, you, you, you start writing and you get stuck.、Uh, while you are writing, before g- getting stuck, you have to update your, your, uh, your uh,、um, structure. If you have like a drag- diagram or treatment or、uh, I don't know, whatever com- st- structure you have、uh, planned at the beginning, you have to update it because you made some changes. And the thing is, these changes, if you, if you, are, if you don't ab- update your map, if you, you enter a maze, you have a map,、uh, the map could be、uh, something very vague or something very structured, but you have to update it. Oh, I already went in this blind alley. I should not go there、uh, again. Maybe、uh, let's try another one. Let's try this.、Uh, so it's like, you know, going in the forest. But you know what? Also, but the thing is, like, by, when you're following only, because of course, like most writers, you will have like an outline or certain yes, tools.、Exactly. But you're only with yourself, though. So in a way, like, you're still trapped in yourself somehow. But what I think is so useful about if you're just telling someone, like, about your story, you know, and then someone will have, like, it's happened to me three times that. My films have been saved by this kind of conversation. And, I, and you just tell them, oh, I'm making a film about this and this without saying this is a problem. And then maybe this person will think of something, you know, oh, it reminds me of this. Or like in one case,、uh, it was a script consultant, but he wasn't consulting my script,、uh, you know. Who, and he just said to me about the first time, my film was about a father who meets his daughter. And he told me about the first time he met his own father. So completely his own personal experience. And suddenly he said it was an anti climax, this meeting. And this was like completely the cure for my film that I had not seen because my character was lacking this shame, you know, which was a huge motivation for the film. And it was like, 
epiphany moment, you know? And it, I didn't even know that I was stuck. I just knew the film had problems and I couldn't yeah. get it funding and blah, blah, blah. And this like just conversation about the film, but not about the problem in which people felt this license to express themselves or give a piece of themselves, which I could never reach because it's outside my own experience, which is the source of the block sometimes that you only see yourself. It was so incredibly useful. Yeah, but that, that's ab absolutely true because, you know, we, we go back to, to uh, the problem, uh, the definition of the different type of problem. So you know that something is wrong, but you don't know what is it exactly. So and before uh, arriving to this step, you have done a lot of work. Uh, you have yeah. written, you have... So uh, th this this is a situation completely different from the first step where you want to have ideas and stuff. Here you are, you are stuck and you don't know what mm -hmm. to do. Uh, so one of the solutions is uh, uh, to, to discuss with someone who who is completely oblivious to the to, to, to your script because he is not trapped in the knowledge you have. Mm -hmm. You are like, you know, uh, uh, the, you're, you, there are strong uh, links between what you have done mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, you, you try to find a solution, you try to find a way, but you are trapped in this knowledge. And the fact that someone uh, with no knowledge at all can come up with something that just unlock. And what, what it means is you will be exploring another set of concepts in your memory mm -hmm. instead of staying blocked on the same set of concepts because you have done a lot of work on, on it. Can we compare uh, an idea or let's say the continuum that we have created uh, in the brain which connects ideas between themselves? Uh, can we compare this in how the brain works uh, with a river, kind of a river, wh where metaphorically it is understandable that the more you've been working with that, within that river, the more you dig something which gets pretty deep and it becomes tougher and tougher uh, because you've been only circulating within that river to see even the possibility of being outside of it. So, it feels that you're trapped into the possibilities that you've created yourself. And the simple fact of confronting yourself with somebody who comes with no river of that kind, yeah. or other rivers, if you are, have a co-writer that comes from another exactly. uh, type of representation, another yeah. kind of, uh, then this confrontation uh, is just for you the possibility of feeling and sensing intuiti intuitively how you could feel if you s stopped being inside that river and if you put yourself slightly outside and taking things from another angle, because it, it is, of course, for, it seems that for the brain, it is, not, it is by definition not possible to see things yeah. from another angle than from the river that you, you have created, because it is just what, you, what yeah. your thoughts have been created, yeah. creating. So, uh, I, I think that's a good metaphor and it, it means that we have a mental representation of the, what, you, what we have written. And to solve this kind of block, we have to change this mental representation. And the flip or the change happens suddenly, and this is why it's called insights. Uh, it's a real shift in our, uh, the, uh, the way we view things. And it could be triggered by uh, uh, discussing with someone uh, it could be uh, uh, something that happened uh, suddenly because your brain have forgotten some uh, uh, element of the problem. Because th th this is also one of the theories. We are uh, uh, like anchored by elements of what we have already done. And we need sometimes to work on something else or to work or to, do, uh, or to discuss anything else to just forgot these elements that keep us trapped in the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is uh, one of, uh, th there are these two theories. Is you know, uh, the, the priming process, when uh, you, know, you prime someone with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with an idea and this help him to get unstuck or to come up with new idea. So your friend or, or, or the person you are discussing with will prime you with new concepts, which, which will trigger. So uh, if we, if I can show you this, I have, um, 
uh, this uh, a representation of the memory, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know. But uh, so, for example, this is the the knowledge storage uh, model. How concepts are stored in our memory. This is how we. Uh, it's like a mind map. For example, uh, 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 white which is a, a color, uh, it's linked to different other concepts. Uh, the, uh, the strongest concepts are the more linked to, to the color, you know, white, black. Uh, you have, uh, uh, so if we look at the category of colors, we have all the other colors, yellow. So yellow, we think about lemon, we think about uh, sour, we think about sweet. Uh, uh, color is also green, uh, so we think about grass. Uh, you, you can, uh, if you, you look at uh, uh, um, dark colors, it could be coffee and so on. So everything is linked, you know, and um, uh, people uh, or individuals have different ways to store uh, the, the knowledge. Uh, for example, this is uh, uh, something that we call steep hierarchy. The knowledge are very uh, are strongly connected. Uh, for example, table is connected with chair. So the, the, when when I prime you with the table. It's chair that come first because it's the closed uh, uh, connection, Alive, yeah. and the others are uh, uh, come later. Food, leg, etc. Here you have a flat hierarchy, and this flat hierarchy is what characterizes creative people. Uh, it means that you have table that is connected to chair and to all other concepts. So when the activation of the, the brain starts, it's spread quickly in this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 storage than in this one, because it's, this one is considered as steep and this one is considered as flat. So here it's a graph showing that uh, this one is better and this is the way we, uh, creative people um, uh, store their knowledge, the way we, the knowledge is structured. So this is one of the theory. The other theory is, uh, not about the structure of the storage of our knowledge, but it's about the attention. So again, here we have uh, the uh, white uh, that is uh, linked to different other concepts in the memory. But here you have focused attention on, uh, it's like, as I said, the spotlight with, with a narrow focus. So we will activate only two or three concepts linked to white. Here you have a spread attention that links a lot of concepts. Uh, so when we talk about divergent thinking is to come up with different uh, concepts with different. So we need to find a way to have what we call defocused attention, which means uh, attention is really, really defocused. So, uh, in my opinion, when we are blocked, is we, we look at the narrow or the, 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 uh, the proximate link between concepts that we have uh, manipulated lately. So there is this, uh, uh, this problem. And to go and see other concepts here, so you need someone to, um, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, give you a new cue that will, you know, trigger the activation of uh, the uh, other concept and other uh, memories. So these are theories about how uh, our uh, uh, semantic memory, uh, um, how we access knowledge in our semantic memory. I think what is, has to be remembered here is the fact that it's normal, first of all, it's normal that to be to feel frustrated and to feel this, uh, this inability to have a clear judgment on your material because it's not a question of being good or bad writer, it's a question of attention. The attention that you need to be focused on something and it's not the kind of attention, if I understand you well, that you need to give another kind of point of view, feedback. You cannot be there and there at the same time. You have to, so it's normal that, that, that it's a problem. So writers don't have to yeah, be to ashamed in a way of, of, of being of frustrated, that. yes. Frustration is part of yeah, the job. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's okay to, be, to, to feel that uh, I'm not able to have this diagnosis of my own work and I need someone or I need another part of myself. I need to let it sleep a little bit yeah. to, have, to have a fresh 
uh, reading after a while, after maybe one month, I don't know. So it's important because because young writers someday they, they, they think that it's about them. No, it's about it's a subjective problem. So it's I cannot be a writer if I if I feel that. No, it's not it's not that. It's it's okay. Yeah. So I think that's 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 an important remark. Does it mean that we need uh, friction, collisions with others? Um, uh, as a medical doctor, uh, I think I, am a, I must remind you something about the uh, psychology of performance. And I can uh, draw a, a short yes. schema. Yes? Okay. Um, it, it's about relationship between performance and stress. It's a, a, an old research of uh, the beginning of 20th century. Yerkes Dodson, the author. And if you increase stress, performance uh, does that. Uh, it means that for uh, performing, like creativity, uh, the stress uh, must be uh, enough and not too much. In my practice, stress is frequently too much. So uh, at first, uh, I have to uh, check what happens, uh, w w which creates this excessive stress. It can be uh, fatigue, mm -hmm. it can be med uh, medical disease, it can be uh, too strong expectancy. I want too much uh, to create. I, I want to create, I want to create. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of uh, tools to reduce uh, or activate, if stress is not enough, uh, uh, stress. The, the good stress, a stress, you, a stress. The good stress correspond and uh, at these zones of stress. Okay. Uh, it's the same in uh, sport psychology or any performance psychology. What is interesting of, here mm. uh, in what you show us is that when we work with uh, uh, first-time directors, I mean, for first features or second features, where the pressure of uh, showing who you are as a, as a filmmaker is huge, uh, we often deal with projects where uh, when it becomes too um, close to very uh, painful issues for the, the, for the writer, uh, we are the, the level of stress uh, that it creates because of, of, of the because of the burning yeah. aspect of the subject uh, makes it very uh, difficult to uh, to to continue to, uh, the work and to yeah, yeah. And, and conversely if you're in that first yes. branch yeah. yes. maybe it's like a, you know like in a story that then you have to raise your stakes a bit if you're in that kind maybe of maybe you're not you know? a writer too if you are in that <laughs> place could uh, be but yeah. or if not you just give yourself some deadline you know like you could yeah. try and you know put some Stress. because you do see some writers that are writers but they're just slightly not you know, they're taking too much of their time, you know, and so they don't move because everything is an option and everything. I think it's harsh to say that you're not a writer. If that's no, the I'm case. kidding. But if, uh, when uh, Fellini was asked, uh, where do you find your ideas? And he said, in the contract I have just signed, which means that if you have a date for shooting, <coughs> suddenly you have to have ideas and you have to choose, you have to... Uh, yeah. uh, I'd like to add something about this because um, I feel this is uh, really true. Sometimes the block doesn't come from the material itself, but from the desire of perfection. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially in the movie business where you know that if your first movie is not good, there's, there won't be uh, a, second, a, a second one. So the, uh, that, that's an advice I took from, uh, I don't know if it's Aaron Sorkin, I watched some masterclass and uh, he said, you know what, instead of being blocked on one project that you keep uh, rewriting for years and years, and um, uh, you should have more than one project. Maybe you should write uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten. So maybe you are blocked on one, but uh, try another one because uh, once you have written like ten scripts, 
uh, you become a better writer instead of insisting on only one. And this is something, if you really pretend to be a writer, that means that you want to write only one project. So you should write more than one at a time. And uh, when Samira says, when you are blocked, just stop. And well, you go move to, to something else. You move to the next project. And then maybe you block, maybe you move to the next. And then you have suddenly three, four, five projects. And maybe one of them suddenly is taking the lead. And you follow this wave. And uh, um, in the story of... Uh, I don't know, I've been a writer for more than 20 years. And uh, just, I don't know, two, two weeks ago, uh, I started to, to work again on the, my first novel that has never been published because I grew tired of it uh, at the moment I had to do it. Uh, but 20 years ago, you know, and suddenly I felt it was possible for me to finish it. But I did, at the beginning, I insisted. I wrote it, rewrote it two times, three times, four times, and then I got rid of it. And I made another novel that got published. And then I have like 15 books published. And now I feel ready for this first project. Maybe it was on the first. It's not what you write first that can that will be produced first. Maybe you need to write 10, 15 scripts before one of them gets shot. And if you have written 15 scripts, maybe it's better than the first one you were insisting on. So have more than one project. I think this is essential. And, and uh, forget about perfection. Your, your work is going to be shitty. Uh, it's normal. This is how they start as, at Pixar. The first version is always bad. What is the common ground on, on all your remarks right now is the idea of movement. In any level, it's movement that can save from the block. It's like you move in your mind, you move to another project, you move from your attitude towards a project, you move because someone told you something, you move because you consider that the box is not the good one, you change the box, you change the genres, you change the narrative family of the project, whatever, you change something. The movement, it seems to be something that yes. is very important. So maybe it's not the same movement for every, every writer, but what kind of movement can help me uh, consider, considering who I am, my sensitivity, my personality, my taste, etc. That can, it seems that there is a common ground on it. I'd like maybe to, to, to say something about, about, about this. Uh, again, uh, coming from, from the scene of mathematics and physics, uh, uh, there's something quite common, especially in physics, is what we call thought experiment. A thought experiment in physics is a way to put into parenthesis some material conditions that um, and obey you to proceed to generalization. For example, if you, Galileo did some experiments when he understood the idea between, uh, 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 the idea in the principle of inertia. If you have a mobile on this table and you just put a force on it, you get an impulsion on it. Well, of course, the mobile will have a little bit of speed and then the speed will decrease and then it will stay still. But Galileo understood that this is a very peculiar condition in which the mobile is, has resistance. So he understood that the general principle of dynamics is to understand that resistance is a peculiar kind of the feature of the world, even though in our world it's, an, it's the main kind of, of feature. And there's many, many stories about There's another one which is very interesting also which there, there's a very famous story when uh, uh, Einstein gave a conference in, Par in Paris in the 1920s. Many people came to assist to the conference. And among those people, there was Ber Henri Bergson, French philosopher, but there was also the poet uh, uh, Paul Valéry. And at the end of the talk, um, Valéry was talking to Einstein, and then a journalist came to see the great physicist and the great poet. And they asked, the, the, the journalist asked, um, how do you do? You must have so many ideas uh, every day. How do you do to keep them? And Valéry answered, you know, he had, he had a very precise system of classification. And Einstein just answered, oh, I just had two ideas in my whole life. So I didn't need any form of classification. And the two ideas were thought experiment. And the first of this idea is very simple to, to understand and very funny to see. At the end of the 19th century, there was an opposition between Maxwell electromagnetism, 
that unifies electricity and magnetism on one side, and on the other side, classical mechanics. One of the consequences of electromagnetism is that the velocity of light is constant in vacuum, which is well known. Uh, from a classical mechanic point of view, speed cannot be constant, they're all relative. And even though from the common sense point of view, it's very difficult to imagine something that could be uh, a, constant, a constant speed. So at the end of the 19th, 19th century, there was a big contradiction between the world described by electromagnetism in which, in which light has a constant speed and the world coming from classical mechanics in which uh, speeds are only relative. And Einstein made the following thought experiment. He was very young. He imagined himself riding a light ray and looking at his image in the mirror while he was riding the light ray. Of course, it's a thought experiment. No material experiment can, can get you to do that kind of thing. But it's the fact of putting in two parentheses very different kind of material condition that uh, put him into the way to find uh, a solution, well, what we call special relativity. It was the first theory to uh, uh, understand that there was no contradiction between the two theories. So I was wondering if, if when you're blocked uh, in the process of, of writing, there could be some kind of thought experiment in which you put into parentheses what, what, and, and to find another look of, of what you're looking at. Uh, what you're studying. Is it not linked to what you call the as if? That's, uh, that, that's uh, I thought uh, about me, that yes, too, yeah, it yeah. Is. Is. Because it's not that you gonna to let down your problem. You just accept the fact that you can go through another, you know, like a parallel uh, story Road, yeah. that, uh, that serves the story itself, but through other parallel ways. Mm. I, I, I think uh, the way an author deal with the, uh, his creativity problem is the creativity in itself. Uh, it determines style and a lot of things about the the issue of the process, the way to cope with. Uh, you you can uh, you can go uh, directly in the problem like a confrontation, or you can uh, use tarot or, or met other metaphorical yeah, uh, other approaches. Ways. You can uh, make as if uh, it's not important. Uh, my, my film is not important at all. Uh, <laughs> I don't believe that, but yeah, I to, try to, to, to play. Yeah, 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 make as to. if. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple ways to deal with this kind of situation, I think. and. Uh, for me, according to me, it's here that the creativity uh, stays. Yeah, like always the same thing, no? tricking your, tricking your fears, deceiving yeah. yourself. Yeah. In the end, it yeah. comes down to, you know? Because we're always our own obstacles. We keep talking about uh, being blocked at the beginning, so we need a lot of ideas. Suddenly, we have too many ideas, so we can be blocked too, and we don't know how to choose them. And, uh, there's the question of pertinence. Maybe we need a good, one good idea is better than many bad ones. Because sometimes I see people, when they have a problem, they keep trying solutions in a way that's um, uh, a failure um, uh, from the start. Because the way to look, to, to look for a solution is bad. So, because they are pushing too much. Uh, but there's something too about, um, when do you know your work is ended? When do you know it's over? Because this is a different kind of block. This is the impossibility to stop. And sometimes somebody spends his whole life writing one thing that will never, never be finished, never. Um, and <laughs> when I felt that uh, for myself, I said, well, I've been working on that for many years now. Maybe, maybe I don't need to think that I need to do something good. Average will be enough. Uh, and um, I do something better the next time. So when you finish something, well, for scripts, I said it's a bit different, but it needs to be good because you need to convince a lot of people, but you don't need to shoot your first script. So finish it. Finishing is really uh, something you learn. 
Uh, and your idea of uh, starting by the end is very good because you know your end point and you know where you want to go. And it's very comfortable to work in that frame. Um, but sometimes the block comes from the idea that you are blocked and that you need to continue. In fact, you need to get rid of something. That happens a lot. And uh, for example, if you write something, try to, uh, you can do it even with a short story. Uh, or a chapter or a scene, try to get rid of the last sentence. Sometimes this is what the block comes from and there's too much. And could you imagine to construct a, 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 syst an, um, a system um, uh, working on probability theory that would give you answers in a, in a um, uh, aléatoirement, I'm sorry. Uh, random? In, in random way. Thank you. I mean, I've, I've seen that in the book of Gus Van Sant. He, he says in the, in the diagrams, at one time, he explains that the cameras are, the tra trajectories, the path of the cameras are randomly uh, uh, decided by dices, by throwing dices. So could, could you imagine that when you have, you've, you, you're faced into a different kind of, of, of blocks, of blocking, uh, you would find a, a, a random system that could gu guide you to some to some things. It's it's what is happening when you use tarots. Yeah, I mean, when you use tarots to know what is going to happen tomorrow to that character, it's just the cards that decide mm. it. But then, what is interesting is that you could be scared with the fact that it's just oh come on, it's not me deciding what my character is go uh, is choosing because it's the cards deciding. But what is interesting is that it still is you because it's you projecting on the solutions Absolutely. generated by the cards. So it's it's just mm. it's it's just I think the game we are talking about here it's just about stimulating the brain, stimulating exactly. the fact exactly. that you go on, because we are machines. Once we are given the authorization to run on an idea, it's just like a door that opens. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, whew, we, there's are, a path open. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is a bit like throwing a dice, because it, like sometimes it baffles me, especially when you finish the film, and then you're like, oh my god, this film is just a, a consequence of all those decisions that you make when you're writing, but actually those decisions are like completely random. You know, we could be at, like, if you're doing a lab, you're at a group like this, and you know, someone says something, and then you think, oh, maybe the character will do this. It's actually almost as random as, you know, it's just an impulse, mm, isn't uh, it? I don't know, because uh, if you build a wall, for example, you can be random with the first stone you choose, or if, you, if it's a wall of stones, it can be random the first. But then, the more you advance, uh, the more necessity must drive yes. and your choices. And uh, uh, the closer you are to the end, the less freedom you have. And it's a kind of comfort, because you can't just do anything. Mm. Unless you are a surreal poet, or some, somebody from the Ulipo. And uh, I knew a guy who was part of the Ulipo. His name was Jean Lescure. He created the art house uh, movie system in France with André Malraux. And he created something very simple. You can experience it at home with any poem. You pick a poem, even one you didn't write, and you, it's called S plus seven. S means substantive, so it's a noun. So you take all the, the, the nouns in the poem, you take a dictionary, and uh, you watch what is seven uh, words um, later or after, and you replace you know, the, the original word with the S plus seven. And the result may be very good. So there is some random in that, but this is a, a method uh, uh, when you are stuck, maybe, to, to find something freer and to be back to play. I like very much what you suggested, uh, which is the fact that uh, maybe sometimes what is key is the choice not of the succession of ideas as, as, the, as uh, what, what guides you, but the choice of a creative strategy, of a, you know, the politics of how you generate ideas, if that, if that politics uh, uh, is creative, if, you know, if the, the way you generate ideas is able to surprise yourself, is a machine to create surprises for yourself, then you, you, you have 
uh, more chances to ge generate a result which is going to be interesting. It seems uh, like it's linked to uh, uh, what is sometimes called bricolage, when you, you lack resources and you need to, uh, to, to come up with uh, uh, solutions uh, with little uh, money or little uh, other resources. So this forces you to be very creative and to find a way to, uh, uh, to tackle the problem, and not in a frontal way, but uh, in... Uh, yeah. And uh, this is uh, something that is very... Uh, it's a form of uh, creativity that is linked to lack of resources. Yeah. This is directly related to you know the experience uh, we are doing with LIM, less is more, is the idea of trying to push creativity thanks to the limits that we generate. Uh, and so it seems, but I would be happy to, uh, to learn from you about that, it seems that the more you restrain the field of possibilities for the brain, the more the brain is creative in finding the way out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And these, uh, um, can I just show you this uh, little experiment where there are some uh, constraints that uh, have been uh, uh, involved? So, uh, for. Uh, have a look at just this, uh, this part. So, the, the participants are given a set of um, uh, diagrams, and uh, they have to choose three, three elements and uh, create a tool. They, don't, they can imagine these elements in bigger or smaller sizes, but they, don't have, they, they cannot change the shape. So they have to, to choose three elements. It's like, you know, we have uh, all these ideas, and you have to choose three. Combine them to create something new. So here you have so the, the element uh, uh, given. Uh, you can choose three, and here you have some, uh, some uh, uh, inventions, which are called pre-inventive uh, forms, that are created using just three elements from the, the one given. And then you introduce a, a constraint. The constraint is you give to the participant who create, for example, this one or this one, uh, uh, you say, okay, now uh, your uh, pre-invention uh, must fit in one category, which is, uh, for example, uh, science instrument. You have to describe, to create a story about your invention that is linked to this category, science instrument, or furniture, or personal item, or toys, or games. So this is constant. At the beginning, you just you know, do something, you create something, but it has no meaning. And then we introduce a constraint. And um, from, th from that moment, you have here a uh, different type of element that has been created with three uh, components. And uh, here, for example, the, uh, the participant uh, was given a, a category personal object. And for his uh, production or pre-inventive form, he said, OK, this will be a contact, a contact lenses remover. So it's something you put on the eye, and it's remove your contact lenses. At the beginning, he didn't absolutely thought about, uh, about. But the fact that you give him a constraint, and you, he has to write something about it, so it became something that you can use for personal, uh, uh, like a personal object, as a contact lens remover. And then here you have uh, uh, another example of a tension wind uh, vein, and uh, the, 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 the participant develop a story about, about this. Uh, so these, uh, these uh, experiments led to the creation of one of the very well-known model in, uh, in creativity and, and could be applied in, uh, in creative writing. It's a very simple one, but it's called the, the Genoplore uh, model. Uh, gen, uh, it's for generative. You, you, you generate ideas, and then you explore. You generate pre-inventive form, and then you explore these forms. So for example, for the writer, he can begin with new plot uh, line uh, and mentally combining familiar concepts and uh, exotic ones and explore the ramification of, uh, of this combination. So it, it can start by something that, you know, like you, you say, uh, when there is a collision, when there is a, something chaotic. And once you have this thing uh, or this seed, 
you start to explore the meaning. Uh, it's not obvious from the beginning. So it's by working on it, you can decide if you can, if it's, uh, we're talking about the weight of, of the ideas, you can decide if it means something, if you, it's worth uh, exploring more, or you have to, uh, to drop it. So, so it's just um, uh, something that happens, you know, accidentally you can um, combine things, and once it's combined, you look at it, you explore it, and maybe it's the, the seed for, uh, for uh, something new. So because the brain is a machine to generate meaning from yes. anything. And from constraint. Yes. So you put constraint. You just say, say okay, you have to, f to, to, to find a meaning to what you have uh, done within this category. Uh, and, uh, and constraint, uh, sometimes we don't, uh, we don't like constraint, but it helps, you know, to, to, to boost uh, uh, creativity, uh, for example, t time. But again, uh, when you say, uh, you know, when you have the, t the, the deadline in the contract, if you haven't done uh, uh, that much reflection or work on the project, uh, and the deadline is, it will be weak what you will produce will be weak. Deadline is good because you will end up, you know, handing the six page or, but uh, this six page will be uh, rich if you have done your homework uh, in some way. And the homework is not only conscious work, you know, by reading, collecting information. It's also by imagining, taking the time to uh, meditate, to think, to, to imagine, to turn around the idea. Uh, one scriptwriter said uh, it's like a wolf uh, turning around uh, uh, his uh, victim, you know, he pray. He turn around the idea. And another one, he the said- The idea oh, is like a goat. Yes, you have it. You, s you, 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 you <laughs> nearly know that this, this is the good one. But uh, another one has said, uh, when I, I, I read the, the, the newspaper and I see uh, an article that is really, really interesting, I don't read it first. I read all the paper and then I read the one that enters me. And it's exactly the same when I have an idea. It's like, you know, protecting this idea. You are, you are afraid of exploring it too quickly. It's like, you know, your subconscious, I don't know if it's, uh, it's uh, true, is working on it. Uh, assessing it uh, uh, lightly, without you know going with the hammer and uh, say, okay, th will it work or, or not? In this way, though, also like when you're writing treatments or outlines, it's of course it's different because you're starting. It's true, but it's a similar thing. To, I think like the comparison with when you go into the script, you know, like if you write for a long time, your treatment, like you are in a way testing it, testing it. Like there's still this like not the pressure of the script, and then you can go into the script and you can really like jump because you've you have done circle it's, yes. it is a circling yes. way you know yeah. and it's a it's a i think there's so much freedom in 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 outlines actually like there's they're considered so like dry, they are dry but they're also very liberating because they're just like a testing ground yeah. you know this can be moved and this and this and it's small and it's compact and it's no stress it's not like and then you go into the script and, it, and, it, and it's okay, you can swim. What you, what you say is that you have to do what Einstein was doing, a uh, thought experiment. You have to write your character to imagine what's happening. Yeah. So you know him. And this is what you do when you do this dialogue in, in the dark. Or this, do the voiceover thing. This was is a super useful one where you just, you record, you like impromptu, no kind of, uh, strings attached, you just imagine like for a scene, for example, or you imagine the scene or it's a scene of your film and you just imagine their voiceover if they were narrating the whole scene, you know, like in a stream of consciousness and without writing just into your phone. It's also very, because, you know, suddenly it's like there's no, you can't like take a shortcut around him. You're in the middle, in the middle of it. And it's, it's, it's interesting because most of the time when you have this river of, of uh, representation of your stream of idea, uh, it means that you, you look at it as a film, meaning you see the character from the outside moving in a space and interacting, etc. cetera. But, uh, uh, and sometimes you could be blocked because you're, you know, you're in that, you're too much on that 
outside position, choosing to do the experiment for the first time. When the first time you do it, it's like, wow. Yeah. It, putting yourself in the shoes of the character and you, you are you putting it in the inside voice, I mean, trying the inside voice, is all of a sudden creating a new river in the brain because you see the outside, the outside world around the character from the angle of their character instead of seeing their character from the point of view of the outside world. So it's a completely, you know, uh, yeah, intimate and, and, revolution. And when you hear sometimes other people's stories that maybe you didn't understand and you hear like a voiceover that they do for their character, like say that you're listening to someone and you're like, don't get it. Like, what are they trying to say? What is this film? About? And then you hear this voiceover. It can be super illuminating because you suddenly understand, you know, there's no theoreticizing. They're just getting to the heart. I mean, it depends if it's a character driven film, but it, it can be, and that know. same exercise becomes even more. Uh, I mean, is is also very interesting when you ask other people. You make them read what you have in a treatment, yeah. for instance, and you tell them, "Please, can you uh, tell me mm. what story you understand?" No. And even, can you tell me that story from the point of view of the first, you know, of, of the of the other character? And then you listen to somebody else taking the helm of all these sensations yeah. from the inside of that other human being. And then it creates that other river in the brain that changes the initial perspective. And that combined with yours can, can create a bit more relief, uh, relief, you know, uh, yeah. a th more 3D kind of uh, vision. Mm -hmm.